Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. Now, it might be a bit more exciting because I just finished an entire Rockstar Energy drink, so I do apologize for all of you guys who hate that I talk so fast. This episode is going to be no different. So I hope you guys all enjoy. Tons of great stories today, of course, in CSK News. All those stories will be time marked and stamped down below. Let's hop into our first story, which I'm sure many of you guys are aware of, and that's Mouse Sports' brand new member, which is going to be Virtus Pro's member, Snacks. He has now officially joined that roster for the prolonged future. As of right now, reported buyouts from Decay and Rush B Podcast range anywhere from $290,000 to $350,000, but either way, guys, we have a brand new Mouse Sports roster, and it will be Sticko himself on the bench for Mouse Sports, who is looking for other options out there in the future, so it's going to be a permanent roster change here for Mouse Sports adding snacks, and again, we really don't know the, the whole Virtus Pro issue in the future, but it does not seem to be fixed by a long shot. Of course, as of right now, Morels will be their stand-in player for the prolonged future, and if anything, this makes the whole situation all the more worse, uh, which you guys can probably imagine. It, it makes a lot of sense right now, especially when Pasha is saying things things like this. I'm not going to leave this sinking ship until 2020. If you guys are a Virtus Pro fan, that's probably not exactly what you want to hear from one of those players on that roster. So I do expect maybe some more roster changes coming soon for this roster. Hopefully pull up some younger talent from teams like maybe AGO or maybe even a Kingwin pull up as well. But as of right now, Virtus Pro struggles continue and it does seem other lineups out there are progressing in the future. This does seem for most eyes out there to be a really good change, a really good pickup by Mouse Sports. But we do have to, of course have to see their next event, ESL Cologne, and how they're actually going to perform with snacks on the roster and very exciting to see what this team's going to be like in the near future when they actually have of course the face of major other big tournaments coming up how this acquirement does work out for them so that was in big news but also even in bigger news out there we do have the european minor close qualifiers going on uh, for the face at major and apparently a new team will be joining them and that will be none other than 3d max themselves if you guys do not know 3d max they were again uh, back in 2014 some of the coolest catavite stickers you have ever seen in the game of csgo and they now have a spectacular chance out of nowhere to actually get back to the major qualifier and get back to getting stickers for all of us. And what is so awesomely timed about this is 3D Max just recently announced their new lineup. It was actually the former Nobo lineup and they had no chance to actually try and qualify for the face of major until a Polish team known as Tomorrow.gg. Two of their players, actually their loans ended uh, as of yesterday as well. So that team had to withdraw their spot and the new spot goes to 3D Max. They're now going to be one of the 16 teams in the European minor, uh, the closed qualifier for the minor. And so of the 16 teams there, eight of them will go through to the minor and the eight teams that go to the minor two of them get to go to the face it major qualifier and actually get stickers so out of nowhere this team 3d max announced their new french roster the new french roster comes out and they actually 2-0 virtus pro again virtus pro though had their stand-in player morels so and again virtus pro online is never really a solid choice out there so uh, again not too big of a surprise there so not your best roster out there and definitely a far fetch to make the major qualifier but it's kind of shocking out of nowhere one of the teams notably known for their stickers comes back to the csgo scene announces a brand new roster and within a couple days they now slip in a spot to the, Mer the European minor close qualifier so they do have a far-fetched chance and I promise you guys all of you watching right now if you want this you know, feel free to comment down below if for some odd reason and a far-fetched chance 3d max makes the major qualifier and we get 3d max stickers I will do a, a double knife giveaway or something crazy so for all of you guys who care about that I am excited cross your fingers but if they make it it means that NIP's chances even go far far fewer so if we see either NIP IP or 3D Max make it out of the European minor to the face it major qualifier, I will do a double knife giveaway. Clip it, save it, next story. And also in bigger news, it does seem Croman will be for FaZe Clan playing for them at ESL Cologne as well, but on top of that, he made sure to note he is not going to be a permanent member for FaZe Clan. So unfortunately enough, all of you fans of Croman out there, his slight comeback from Heroics time and his, his great short stint with FaZe Clan, he's only a stand-in player and in the future, he is still looking for options. So for all you teams out there, Croman will not be a permanent member of FaZe Clan and feel free to offer this guy. He's been playing great as a of late, especially at ESL Bela Horizonte. Not his best performance there, but again, obviously joining that team in place of Olaf Meister out of nowhere. They managed to win ESL Bela Horizonte, and he played very well with Heroic. Has some great talent. Expect him to be signed sometime soon after his short stint as a stand-in with FaZe Clan. Now also, in even bigger news, Gambit Gaming becomes the first, I guess you could say, the first of higher tier teams in ESCA Mountain Dew League to actually withdraw themselves from Mountain Dew League. Now, first of all, their current record in the Mountain Dew League was 3-5, and five, and if you guys do not know, this current season of ESCA Mountain Dew League is not actually playing for a Pro League spot. That means the winner of this season of ESA Mountain Dew League will not actually go to Pro League, but in this case is actually very big news because Gambit Gaming withdrawing themselves from Mountain Dew League to dedicate more time to bigger tournaments makes a lot of first time shorthand, I guess you could say for the short term, uh, makes a lot of sense. But in the long term, it could really hurt themselves in terms of ever having a Pro League spot because them withdrawing themselves from the Mountain Dew League right now, it actually demotes themselves to ESCA Open. They have to requalify if they ever have a chance to actually make 
make Mountain Dew League again. And even then, that's a long stretch. They have to actually get an invite in any other sense. So, and again, them being a team who left the, the league with a three and five record, they're probably not going to get an uh, invite, a direct invite back to Mountain Dew League. So, Gamut Gaming pretty much hurting themselves in the long term to actually probably benefit themselves in the short term. We'll see if it actually works out for them. But again, a ballsy play there. Uh, you really can't blame them though. They are struggling. In a quick segment here, guys, I've heard a lot of news and rumors and speculation about Olaf Meister right now. It does seem what he's going through is quite serious in more, mo more, more modes than one. So I'm going to share with you guys some rumors in next episode. I'm not going to hopefully put it, I, I'm, I'm not really sure how to share this kind of news, guys. I've only heard rumors right now as to what's happening with Olaf Meister, but it does seem, I can almost guarantee you guys, for the prolonged future, the next few months, he is going to be off Phase Clan and not playing competitive CSGO. As of right now, it does seem what he's going through is quite serious, and there's two rumors out there as to what's going on. I will share that with you guys in next episode, but also bouncing off that, guys, and big news for Tempo Storm, it comes to no surprise, I share with you guys last episode, uh, that team actually playing a ran as a random lineup. I think it was actually Happy, Innocent, Headshot, Fox, um, alongside Horvy, uh, formerly of uh, some Brazilian lineups out there. Uh, Horvy actually joined that random lineup to for the DreamHack Masters qualifier. Now, I told you guys last episode that was pretty strange, and now does that up as speculation does point out, according to Nell re uh, Redirect as well. I'll link the article down below. It does seem that Tempo Storm is looking to replace a couple members on that roster, and it does make a lot of sense as well because of that random DreamHack Master qualifier roster, you know, Headshot, Fox, uh, uh, innocent, happy, uh, alongside Horvy. The two members that were not in that actual five-man lineup were both Chetty and Lowell, and those are the two players they're looking to replace on that roster. As of right now, speculation points towards two members. That is actually current Red Reserve member Brawlin, and former, of course, many of you guys are well aware of this guy, former Fnatic IGL Golden, to actually join that Tempo Storm roster, which would be an insanely random roster. Unfortunately enough, this uh, this Tempo Storm roster did actually fail to qualify for the minor qualifier itself. I would have loved to see a sporadic roster actually you know, do some big things things, but if they actually get Braun and, and Golden, a very, very mixed roster there, but very cool to see how that mixed, I guess you could say Spanish, European, and, and what other mix out there roster would do. So Tempo Storm looking to make changes, and they could be some big ones. And very last in today's episode of CSK News, we have some great things coming this weekend, so thank you all for the great comments. I've been lacking in replying to comments because I've been so busy making these episodes. Once I make these episodes, I then, I kind of have to edit them and upload them for the morning, and then I go off to work, and I really can't reply to comments there. So thank you all for commenting down below. I hope to be back this weekend replying to your comments and all your great support. You guys have been awesome. Let's talk about our last story though. All around SK Gaming or should I say MeBR, the new Made in Brazil roster. Of course playing under the Immortals tag but kind of for Made in Brazil. It's a confusing situation to be a part of but actually in big news out there, Noah Winston announced in a great podcast which I hopefully will link down below for all of you if I can find the correct link. He did announce in fact, he did not give us in terms of in years or, or in months the actual length of their contracts. He did announce though as of right now we do believe the current MIBR or MeBR contracts are apparently the longest in the current CSGO uh, game right now. The current longest CSGO contracts do belong to these players. He did not say how many years they were, how long they were, but we can speculate as well. Maybe he meant of all time in CSGO, which could mean he actually gave these guys four-year contracts. Now, I want to have this be an open debate. I wanted to talk about this for so long on the channel, so please leave a comment down below what you think about this because we've heard so many sides of this argument when you refer to them as the new Virtus Pro who gave themselves their long contracts, those three to four-year contracts, which seemingly doomed them from the very start. Ever since we heard about Virtus Pro's four-year contracts, apparently making 25000 you know, twenty to 30000 a month as those new contracts as well, we've seen the downfall of this lineup. And of course, as of the last year, Taz going away to play for Kingwin. We haven't really heard much from him ever since that move away and now of course most recently Snacks going downhill and he's he's been moving to Mouse Sports which I, again that probably not a downhill movement for him I, I think it's great to see him moving to a different team where he can actually find some new motivation but even more so than that we've seen Pasha's string of depressing tweets out there who seemingly does not enjoy playing for Virtus Pro and that's ever since the first year and a half to two years of their four year contracts they still have the majority of their contracts left and it does not spell good for reference and when we say history repeats itself what do you guys think about SK Gaming or I guess, sorry, I, I do apologize. MeBR possibly having four or maybe even longer contracts. What do you guys think about this? Does this spell success or does it spell, of course, the downfall of the future MeBR lineup? We only have one reference right now in terms of long-term contracts. And again, ever since Virtus Pro did sign those contracts, it did seem their motivation fell off. And if we're going off previous results as well, SK Gaming, the former SK Gaming roster, did not have amazing results their past two or three months. Now, it could be said that roster was not struggling as a team. They were struggling to play under that organization. They knew they were on their way out. Maybe they had problems with management. They were they could have been losing on purpose, I guess people could be saying. And again, 
this roster there's a lot of room to grow because they've only been together for a, a few five to six months right now but could this be a bad timing for the future of SK Gaming or our MeBR what do you guys think about that is it good in terms of this to give these guys all this money up front to promise them a four to five year contract is that a good thing for these guys will we see them fall off or will they actually thrive under the new environment representing their country although Stewie wasn't made in Brazil, but that doesn't matter. As always, hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSK News. I will see you this weekend with another episode of news. And in that, I'm actually bring up a lot of good points out there. So feel free to comment down below. What do you guys think about the topics that we're going to talk about? We're going to talk more about SK Gaming in the future because I kind of want to make more like rant style videos or more like debatable videos out there where I actually debate some topics. And one of them will be as well, the situation of Doc. Now we've had a recent video, Return of the Numbers, I believe number 38. I will go ahead and link that video down below for all of you because I will reference it the next couple of videos where Richard Lewis and Thorne and do talk a lot about the Doc situation. Apparently, Doc has been playing on, on several accounts that have had back bans in their history. I've been talking to Doc via Twitter to kind of get his side of the story as well. And if you guys don't know the background story of Doc, it's definitely a suspicious one. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you guys and tell you guys fictitious things, or uh, try not to at least. But Richard Lewis and Thorne make some great points, and they make some very harsh points without actually backing it up with a lot of evidence out there. So there are definitely two sides of the Doc story that I, I would love to explain to all of you in a new video as well. And I cannot wait to like, kind of have a little debate back and forth and see what you guys think about that. So as always, I hope you guys all enjoy. I will see you all sometime this weekend. I hope you guys all have a great weekend, a safe weekend. My name is Jake Like You, and I will see you all then. Goodbye.